We live in a small one-room apartment where we can hear every noise this made by our neighbor. And as a recent, our neighbor has been particularly hooked to one song and have been playing it 24-7. And that is the song Ditto by the South Korean idol girl group New Jeans. I even remember all the lyrics now, you know, the words come so clear to your ear when you hear it at 3 in the morning. It goes in the lines of Stay in the middle Like you're little Don't want the riddle And it continues with this rhyme Anyways, my point here is that This is the very state of K-pop in today's world You go to Japan, you hear twice in cafes When you go to the States, you hear BTS everywhere And even when you're watching cartoons You'll hear the Korean idol girl group BLACKPINK on The Simpsons but as much as people around the world right now are more than addicted to listening to the Korean boy bands such as BTS or the girl groups such as New Jeans, I was actually quite surprised to see that nowhere near as many people are interested in the business side of K-pop. Without any exaggeration, K-pop is at an epochal moment right now, and the turn of events that happen in a few days' time will change the power dynamics of the K-pop industry for decades to come. And if you like to watch TV series such as Billions on Netflix that deals with the world of hedge funds, hostile company takeovers, and stock price manipulation and whatnot, you will absolutely love this video as this is basically like one of the season finale type episodes on Billions but happening in real life as of right now in South Korea. There are so many twists and turns in this drama that even I felt like once again questioning whether this was actually happening in real life and not on an episode in a high finance drama. Now, the video is going to be quite detailed in some parts, and certain financial information and terms will inevitably appear, so I'll be putting in timestamps on the video so you guys can come back and watch it in parts if you want to. So without further ado, grab your popcorns and let's get into today's video which is the fierce and hostile fight between the company Hype Entertainment, who are the owners of BTS, and the Kakao Corporation, South Korea's internet giant that is monopolizing all aspects of digital life of the South Koreans right now, to take over what was once South Korea's biggest entertainment company, SM Entertainment. And by the end of this video, you will see that behind all of the good-looking, smiling idols on the surface of K-pop are the cold-hearted, ruthless business people who are willing to go against even their own family members for further financial gain. Let's start off with some basic background information. If you like K-pop, you may have heard of idol groups such as Girls' Generation, EXO, Red Velvet, and ESPA. These groups are all owned by the SM Entertainment Company. Now, I may sound like some old uncle always starting his sentences with quote-unquote back in my days, but then I may very well be an old uncle now that I've entered my 30s. So I'm just gonna say it. Back in my days, actually not even that long ago, only back to like 2015, when someone told you that the entertainment company that owned the small boy band BTS was attempting to take over the management of the almighty SM Entertainment, the owner of K-pop giants such as Girls' Generation, EXO, and so on most people in South Korea would have laughed in your face. But in the year 2023, that is exactly what is happening right now. And at least for now, Hype Entertainment seems to be winning on this path to taking control of SM Entertainment against its competition. However, with the drama of so many twists and turns this whole SM takeover situation has been, nobody can be certainly sure that Hype will indeed turn out to be the ultimate winner at the end. And now, let's talk about Hype Entertainment's major competition on the SM Entertainment takeover, and that is the South Korean IT giant, the Kakao Corporation. Although Kakao Corporation is not as famous abroad, this company alone essentially monopolizes all the digital realms of the lives of the South Koreans. You want to talk to your family, friends, or the people at work? All South Koreans ubiquitously have to utilize their messenger app, Kakao Talk. You want to call an Uber ride in South Korea, you have to utilize Kakao Tea, as Uber has been banned in South Korea in 2019 by the South Korean government. You want to conduct an online payment? P 
people in Korea do not really use PayPal. Everybody uses Kakao Bank. And this pattern just continues on and on for all kinds of digital activities that you conduct in South Korea. The Kakao Corporation will always be involved. So needless to say, Kakao is indeed a formidable enemy from the perspective of hype due to all the access to capital in which the Kakao Corporation has and just the sheer influence and reputation in which this company has when it comes to aggressive company mergers and expansion into different industries. And in fact, Kakao Corporation was the first to move in the attempt to take control of SM Entertainment before Hype Entertainment was ever involved. But first, let's go back and ask this question. Why is SM Entertainment the most symbolic, once Korea's most blue chip entertainment company, subject to such predicament of outside takeover in the first place? The founder of SM Entertainment, Lee Suman, is in the middle of all of this drama. In 2021, Lee Suman announced his intentions to sell about 19% of all of SM Entertainment stock shares in which he personally owned. And of course, a lot of the corporate giants of South Korea such as Kakao, CJ, and Naver showed initial interest in purchasing these shares from Lee as this would mean that they would then become the majority shareholder of SM Entertainment. However, as a condition for the sale of these SM shares, Lee Suman asked in return that he gets hired as an executive personnel of SM Entertainment and demanded a whopping 10 billion South Korean won in annual salary. This rounds up to around 7.6 million US dollars. And in addition to such unrealistic demands, corruption allegations against Lee Suman, such as his establishment of paper companies in locations such as Hong Kong in order to avoid taxation surfaced, leading all corporations that were initially interested in purchasing the shares of SM Entertainment from Lee Suman to back off, not wanting to deal with all of this drama. And let's take this moment to discuss a little bit more about the issues and controversies related to the SM founder, Lee Suman. On December of 2022, an activist hedge fund based in South Korea named Align Partners purchased around 0.91% of all of SM stocks, becoming a major shareholder. And just as in how the activist hedge fund managers in the US, such as Bill Ackman, behave once they have a large portion of shares of a certain company, the people at Align Partners made a public statement stating how SM Entertainment stock shares were tremendously undervalued. And they said that the cause of such ridiculous current undervaluation of what was once Korea's most blue chip entertainment company with by far the largest market capitalization was because of the poor governance structure of SM Entertainment structured in a way to strictly provide financial benefits for the company's largest shareholder, Lee Suman. To elaborate, Lee Suman has always had issues with creating unfair contracts with subsidiary companies that he himself has created and sending SM Entertainment revenue to the subsidiary companies to put it in his own pocket. For instance, it has been reported that the subsidiary company in which Lee Suman has created, called the Light Company, received up to 140 billion won, a staggering 106 million in US dollar amount from the day of the company's founding to 2022 by SM Entertainment. In fact, even in the year 2022 when SM Entertainment reported annual company net losses of more than 80 billion Korean won, 12.9 billion Korean won was sent to the light company. And until the activist hedge fund Align Partners made this very issue public, the light company did not pay any dividend payments to its shareholders, not even one single time meaning all money went into mostly to the pockets of Lee Suman. And finally, with this public pressure from the hedge fund aligned partners to acts such as disclosing board meeting records and public disclosure of the accounting books of SM Entertainment, did this questionable contract between SM Entertainment and the light company that has been continuing for decades come to official termination. But with aligned partners still only owning 0.91% of all of SM Entertainment shares, the type of large change of core governance structure of SM Entertainment as wanted by the hedge fund seemed highly unlikely. 안녕하세요. 공동대표이사 이성수입니다. 안녕하세요. 공동대표이사 타경준입니다. 
many of the board members and the executive management layer of SM Entertainment has long had a dislike for the acts of the company founder, Lee Suman. So on January of 2023, Lee Sung-soo, the current CEO of SM Entertainment and also the biological nephew of Lee Suman, made a public statement in that they agree with the demands made by aligned partners and began to make some major changes to the company's board of directors. Then on February of 2023, SM Entertainment posted a video on the YouTube channel of their quote-unquote SM 3.0 strategy and how they will now be a global entertainment company that will work for the gains of their fans and their shareholders. The last part of the sentence was an indirect stab at the company founder Lee Suman as SM Entertainment has long been criticized for being a company that only focused on the financial gains of its founder and majority shareholder Lee Suman and not the rest of the shareholders in general. Lee Suman watched all of this with much dislike, but then he probably thought in the lines of, let these kids complain and try to act like they're doing something something. But at the end of the day, I am the founder of this company, I am the majority shareholder, and these hedge fund guys that align partners with their 0.9% shares and my little nephew CEO and his cronies still will not be able to do anything much. But then, a few days later, on February 7th of 2023, lightning struck to Lee Suman in broad daylight. SM Entertainment, once again currently led by Lee Suman's nephew, CEO Lee Sung Soo, announced that they will issue new shares of SM Entertainment stocks and sell all of these newly issued stock shares to the Kakao Corporation for 217.1 billion Korean won. This is around 165 million US dollars. And with the purchase of these newly issued shares, the Kakao Corporation now had a substantial 9.05% stake of all of SM Entertainment shares, making them the second largest shareholder of SM Entertainment, which provided a direct and immediate threat to Lee Suman's majority shareholder position. And now, Lee Suman is desperate. Although he was staying abroad with a fractured arm at the time of the announcement, he immediately flew back to South Korea and filed a lawsuit against SM Entertainment stating that the issuance of new shares by SM Entertainment and the immediate sale of the shares to the Kakao Corporation was illegal. Thus, the Supreme Court of South Korea received a lawsuit from Lee Suman against SM Entertainment and his demand for the injunction of the newly issued SM shares. But this alone was not enough for Lee Suman to secure his position in the company against his CEO nephew, the rest of the current executives at SM Entertainment, the hedge fund managers at Align Partners, and of course, now, the almighty Kakao Corporation who sided with the SM executives and the hedge fund managers against Lee Suman. So immediately on February 10th, 2023, only three days after the Kakao announcement, Lee Suman announced that he was to sell a majority portion of the SM Entertainment stock shares in which he personally owned, which comes to a staggering 14.8% of all of SM Entertainment's total company stock shares to Hive Entertainment. And along with the purchase of SM shares from Lee Suman himself, Hive announced that they will publicly be buying up to almost 6 million available SM stock shares from the Korean stock exchange at 120,000 Korean won a share. That is around 90 US dollars per share. And this public purchase by HYBE was going to be conducted between February 10th to the March 1st. And if this public purchase of 6 million shares of SM Entertainment was to be successfully conducted according to plan by HYBE, this would make them own up to 40% of all available stock shares of SM Entertainment making them by far the majority shareholder and essentially the owner of SM Entertainment. And people initially thought that this additional public purchase of SM stock shares at 120,000 Korean won or at 90 US dollars by HYBE was going to be conducted rather smoothly as the price of SM stocks per share before the announcement was made was only hovering around at around 60 to 70 US dollars. So for most of the shareholders of SM, it made financial sense to sell their stocks to HYBE at 90 US dollars a share and make a large profit from it. But then if everything did indeed go this smoothly, this whole situation would not be the billions type financial drama that it has become today. 
So let's move on to the next chapter. So let us summarize the set of events that has prevailed up to this point. The founder and majority shareholder of SM Entertainment, Lee Suman, has always been subject to criticism over his conducts which prioritized his own personal financial gains, oftentimes at the sake of company profits. This led to the accumulation of much discontent from the board of directors of SM Entertainment and the outside investors. An activist hedge fund by the name of Align Partners then stepped in and bought 0.91% of all SM Entertainment shares, then in one of the board meetings raised the point that SM Entertainment shares were irrationally undervalued, mainly due to investor mistrust of the corporate governance structure of SM Entertainment, which worked primarily for the financial gains of the founder, Lee Suman. The board of directors of SM Entertainment, including Lee Suman's nephew, sided with Align Partners and against Lee Suman and stated that they agree with the demands made by Align Partners. But then the 0.91% total share of SM owned by the activist hedge fund was too small to have any significant impact on Lee Suman's majority shareholder status. Then in a few days time, the Kakao Corporation stepped in and bought a significant 9.05% of all SM Entertainment stock shares then sided with Align Partners and the board of directors of SM Entertainment to oust the founder Lee Suman from being involved in any aspects of SM Entertainment. Feeling directly threatened for his position at the company in which he created, Lee Suman flied back from abroad to South Korea with a broken arm and issued a lawsuit to the Supreme Court of South Korea against SM Entertainment, alleging them of illegally issuing new shares of the company's stock, then handing them to the Kakao Corporation. Then, only two days after he returned to Korea to file the lawsuit against SM Entertainment, the founder Lee Suman then makes a momentous decision to sell almost all shares of SM in which he personally owned, which comes to a staggering 14.8% of all available SM Entertainment shares, to Hive Entertainment, the company which owns BTS, at $320 million. Then Hyde makes an additional announcement stating that they'll publicly buy almost up to 6 million additional shares of SM Entertainment at 120,000 Korean won or 90 US dollars per share between February 10th to March 1st from willing sellers who currently own shares of the SM Entertainment stock. Hyde Entertainment did this in order to be able to own up to 40% of all of SM Entertainment shares, effectively becoming the owners of SM Entertainment if they were to succeed with this public purchase of SM stocks. So now, did Hype then succeed with the open purchase of 6 million shares of SM at 120,000 Korean won or around 90 US dollars per share? The short answer is, against all odds, they could not. People once again initially thought that Hype would easily succeed in this open purchase as SM share price before Hype announcement was below even 100,000 Korean won per share, far lower than what Hype was willing to pay per share. And although share prices of SM did initially increase after the announcement by Hype, it seemed that the share prices would remain below the 120,000 Korean won line as March 1st approached, which was the last day of the open share purchase. This is as more and more investors and funds sold their shares of SM Entertainment around 120,000 Korean won line in the open stock market as first, as SM Entertainment shares were only initially around 90,000 to 100,000 Korean won anyways before the time of the hype announcement for most of the owners of SM shares. Selling it now when it was around 120,000 Korean won would mean huge profits for them. And because of this, the price of SM shares continued to decrease rapidly on the deadline day of February 28th, as many investors and funds once again sold the SM shares in order to realize gains. And as long as the price per share of SM Entertainment remained below 120,000 Korean won on February 28th, this was a win for Hype as this was still below the publicly announced purchase price, meaning that they can mostly go ahead with the planned purchase of approximately 6 million shares of SM Entertainment at 120,000 Korean won per share. But then, on the day of February 28th, when the share price of SM was rapidly decreasing due to all people throwing their shares to realize gains, a mysterious force intervened, then went on to purchase almost again 
this is some real life billions drama type situation here. This mysterious force, in a matter of minutes before the market closed on February 28th, purchased an astounding amount of around 7.5% of all available SME shares by spending 134 billion Korean won in a matter of minutes, thus subsequently skyrocketing the price of SME shares in the last minute and having the SME share price end at 127,600 Korean won per share as the market closed on the 28th. And with that, Hype Entertainment's attempts to become the majority shareholder and effective owners of SM Entertainment failed, as no SM shareholder of the right mind would now sell their stocks to Hype Entertainment for 120,000 Korean won a share when they could receive 127,600 Korean won per share from the market. Now, if you are Hype Entertainment, what would you do? Yes, lawsuit. Hype Entertainment filed an official petition for formal investigation to South Korea's Financial Supervisory Service, which is the government institution equivalent of the US Securities and Exchange Commission or the SEC. And their claim was obviously that there was a clear case of stock price manipulation conducted by certain market forces, all with the intention to sabotage Hybe's public purchase of SM Entertainment shares at 120,000 Korean won per share. And to be honest, we can all already kind of guess what this mysterious market force of seemingly unlimited capital that has sabotaged Hybe's plans in the last minutes were. It has been reported that most of these last-minute purchases of SM stocks in gargantuan amounts occurred in the Pangyo branch of IB Bank in Korea. Guess where the main office of the Kakao Corporation is located at? Yes, at Pangyo. And then again, although Hype did file a suit for investigation against possible stock price manipulation to South Korea's equivalent of the SEC, this investigation would take a long time. And the next major board meeting of SM Entertainment, where the next owner of the company will be announced, is scheduled only in a matter of a few days at the end of March 2023. So at this point, Kakao Corporation seemed to be the winner of this battle against Hype to take over SM Entertainment. But then if you have watched the video carefully, you may ask, how? Did you not say before that Kakao purchased around 9.05% of all SM stocks while Hype bought 14.8% from Lee Suman. So technically, isn't Hype still the majority shareholder despite the failed attempt at the additional public purchase in the open market? But if you look into the details, it goes like this. Hype shares plus Lee Suman's remaining small shares comes to around 17%. Then they have their ally, a Korean mobile gaming company called Comtus, which owns 4% of total SM shares. So add all of that, Hype side currently has around 21% of all SM Entertainment stock shares. But then the Kakao Corporation also have their ally, which is KB Capital Management, which owns 5% of all SM shares. In addition to that, every analyst in South Korea has guessed at this point that this mysterious market force buying hundreds of billions of Korean won worth of SM stocks from Pangyo are on the side of Kakao or are directly Kakao. And if you count all the SM stocks gained from the buying spree that was conducted in the last few days of February 2023, and especially the last few hours and minutes of February 28th, this comes to around a whopping 7.5% of all SM Entertainment shares. And let's not forget that the board executives of SM, such as the current CEO of SM, and the rest of the high-level executives own around 1% of all SM shares. And as I mentioned many times already, they are on Kakao's side. So if we add the 9% which Kakao directly owns, then the 5% from their ally KB Capital Management, then the 7.5% which is most likely Kakao themselves or their allied force, and the 1% from the high-level executives of SM, it means that the Kakao Corporation side owns around 22.5% of all SM shares, which is larger than Hybe's 21%. So by this point, the consensus in Korea was that Kakao won this battle and they will be announced as the new owners of SM at the next major board meeting at the end of March. But then the tables turned once again only a few days ago. Remember that from the earlier part of the video, the founder Lee Suman flew back to South Korea 
with a broken arm and asked the Supreme Court of South Korea to conduct injunction on the SM shares sold to Kakao by the Board of SM Entertainment, stating that their issuance of new SM shares at this time of dispute for the management rights of the company should be illegal. And on March 3rd, the Supreme Court of South Korea accepted Lee Suman's request for injunction, meaning that the 9.05% purchase of SM stocks by Kakao has been nullified or just plain cancelled. Now, the Kakao Corporation can of course appeal to this injunction, but this then again would take time. And even Kakao do not have the courage to get on the nerves of the Supreme Court of the country with Kakao especially not being looked upon fondly at this moment by the law officials and politicians of South Korea for reasons such as privacy regulation violations and market monopoly. So at least for now, it does not seem like that the Kakao Corporation will appeal against the Supreme Court's order, meaning once again that the 9.05% ownership of SM Entertainment has effectively evaporated. So if you minus this 9%, then the Kakao Corporation now only has 13.5% of all SM Entertainment shares, far less than Hive Entertainment's 21%. So this means yet another twist and turn has happened in the battle to own the most symbolic K-pop entertainment company, SM. So then, did Hive win after all? Not really. This whole situation has really turned into a game of chicken at this point by these two giants of Hive and Kakao Corporation, and as popular as BTS is, the Kakao Corporation still has far more access to capital than Hive Entertainment. The current market capitalization value of Hive Entertainment is at around 7.6 trillion Korean won. This comes roughly to around 5.8 billion US dollars. On the other hand, the market cap value of Kakao Corporation as of current is at 22.6 billion US dollars, far larger than Hive's 5.8 billion US dollar market cap value. And it has recently been announced that Kakao received access to foreign capital, such as capital from Saudi Arabia's sovereign fund, which means even more money for Kakao to burn. So with this said, after the Supreme Court announcement, which took away 9.05% of all of Kakao's shares of SM, the Kakao Corporation announced on the March 7th that they will now be conducting open purchase of SM Entertainment shares at an unfathomable 150,000 Korean won per share. And if they are to succeed with this open purchase, they will return as the winners of this battle for SM Entertainment. The ultimate question then has to be asked, is this all worth it from a financial standpoint for these two companies? Or is this just a battle between two huge egos eager to acquire that symbolic value in which SM Entertainment has to the minds of the South Koreans and the K-pop industry and come out of all of this as this unquestionable, overbearing force of the K-pop industry? If I knew the answer to this question, I'll substantially be richer in a few weeks as I'll either go short or long on the relevant stocks to realize gains based on this knowledge. But the answer is, I don't. At least on the surface, both Hive Entertainment and the Kaka Corporation have their rightful business reasons as to why they are so eager to take control of SM Entertainment. For HYBE, with the members of BTS serving for the military, as well as the company itself not having the history that SM Entertainment has in the industry, the ownership of SM Entertainment can have both large practical and symbolic values, as in how HYBE can now diversify their revenue sources by now also having access to the SM Idol groups such as ESPA and Girls' Generation, as well as the upcoming idol groups that are to debut in the future time from SM. And like I said, the ownership of SM Entertainment by HYBE can be perceived by the eyes of the South Koreans as a passing of the torch of sorts, with SM Entertainment that was once by far the most prestigious and blue chip of all K-pop entertainment companies, now officially being under the ownership of HYBE, HYBE is now the unquestionable king of the K-pop throne. And of course, Kakao also do have their clear reasons of wanting to own SM Entertainment as well. First, the Kakao Corporation is scheduled to enlist yet another one of their company subsidiaries, the Kakao Entertainment Corporation, into the South Korean stock exchange at around the end of 2023. And with the successful ownership of SM Entertainment and having its artists come under the wings of the Kakao Entertainment Corporation, 
the initial public offering or the IPO price of Kakao Entertainment Corporation will skyrocket in comparison to if they are not to own SM Entertainment. And with the Kakao Corporation basically monopolizing all digital realms and platforms of South Korea, the purchase of a major entertainment group will also have a great synergistic effect. Think of it as in an advertising giant who owns all of the advertising billboards that are set up in the country in the 1970s, purchasing a local cable channel. That is what owning SM Entertainment would be like for Kakao and the type of potential synergy in which this could bring from a financial perspective of the company. And with the Kakao Corporation's notorious reputation in South Korea for aggressive corporate expansion and mergers, the purchase of SM Entertainment could be the official first step into the K-pop industry and the subsequent enlargement of their position in the industry. You know, who knows what entertainment company they will try to take over next with their unlimited capital and their historical reputation for takeovers. So there you have it. Personally, I do hope that Hive Entertainment and the Kaka Corporation can put their egos aside and come to a mutually beneficial agreement rather than an all-out state of war. And with the executives of both companies reportedly having a secret meeting on just yesterday as of the time of making this video, which is March 11th, 2023, they may indeed come to a form of an agreement before the major SM board meeting at the end of March. But this whole situation being the drama of twists and turns, and then more twists and turns it has been, we can never be sure of how the events will turn out to be until the next major SM board meeting is held at the end of March. So as I finished recording and was in the middle of editing this video, a breaking news came out. Long story short, Hive Entertainment and the Kakao Corporation came to an emergency agreement. And the winner seems to be the Kakao Corporation. The Kakao Corporation now officially has all management rights to SM Entertainment, and Hive Entertainment announced that they will now officially back off from all of their acquisition efforts of SM Entertainment. As I predicted earlier in the video, it did turn out that at the end of the day, Hive Entertainment just could not compete with the all-powerful Kakao Corporation and their access to capital that is significantly larger than that of Hypes. And from the perspective of the Kakao Corporation, it does indeed seem like there's such tremendous value in owning SM Entertainment, especially with the upcoming IPO of the Kakao Corporation subsidiary, Kakao Entertainment, scheduled by the end of the year. So Kakao Entertainment, which itself is a subsidiary of the Kakao Corporation, now owns Starship Entertainment, Edam Entertainment, High Up Entertainment, etc. of subsidiary entertainment companies under its wing. And of course, now to add to that, SM Entertainment. And this is all even before Kakao Entertainment has underwent a formal IPO. Now, what do I feel about this victory of the Kakao Corporation against Hive Entertainment in the battle for SM? In one sense, I am not entirely surprised that Kakao came out to be the ultimate winners. As much as Hype Entertainment are Goliaths in their own right in the K-pop entertainment industry with the success of BTS and the success of its subsequent groups, they were still the Davids when it came to financially competing against the Kakao Corporation if Kakao was to go to a state of all-out battle. And I'm by no means an insider at Kakao Entertainment, so I do not know the exact plans in which Kakao has for SM Entertainment. And I have no doubt that the people at Kakao will have a great plan of action in mind that will come to benefit the fans and the shareholders of SM Entertainment. However, I believe the overarching public concern in Korea in regards to the situation is, now that Kakao Corporation has taken SM under its wings as one of the many, many subsidiaries, SM artists will lose that unique quote-unquote SM feel and identity in which they possess and their fans love so much and become just one of the many generic, soulless entertainment companies. And I do personally share the same sentiments in regards to how this should be the primary concern for Kakao and how they plan their future ahead with SM Entertainment. Although having committed many regrettable conducts over the past few years, mainly associated with its founder Lee Suman, SM Entertainment is still to the hearts of many South Koreans as well as many K-pop fans around the world. The pioneering entertainment company that put K-pop on the global map with first-generation idol groups such as Girls' Generation, and still to this day very much a blue-chip entertainment company with a solid fan base who never fails to show unwavering support to the SM idols and groups. 
So as long as the management of Kakao do not allow the SM artists to lose their unique sense of SM identity and soul, which subsequently earned the love from their fans for decades and made SM Entertainment the company that it is today, but at the same time eradicate all of the internal governance problems that was always linked with the company such as tax avoidance, manipulative contracts, and embezzlement. It does seem like both Kakao Corporation and SM Entertainment can mutually benefit from this recent development and hopefully the entire K-pop industry as well.